Hi, I'm David Fetter, Executive Editor Technical for Prepared Foods. Welcome you to another Prepared Foods video. Today, we're with Alexa Bossart. She's a sweetener expert, RD, research chef, and a regular prepared foods contributor. Alexa will be talking with us about the new near zero calorie sugar allulose. But first, a little background. Allulose is a natural sugar derived from sources such as beets, corn, and other plants. Um, it's also in jackfruit, raisins, figs. And as of last year, the FDA allowed allulose to be excluded from total and added sugar counts on the nutrition supplement facts labels when it's used as an ingredient in foods and beverages. Uh, while it tastes and functions like table sugar, it only has about 1 20th to 1 10th the calories. And in fact, those calories might not be metabolized by the body at all either. So allulose is pretty much of a free sweetener. Um, so Alexa, that makes it seem like allulose is the holy grail of sweeteners. What do you think? That's right. It actually is kind of the holy grail because it can be used as a one-to-one -one replacement. That makes it extremely convenient as well. So is it considered like a high intensity sweetener like stevia or monk fruit, which are hundreds of times sweeter than nutritive sugars? Or um, is it just the sweetest sugar like any of the other types of sweetener options that are currently being used? So on a relative sweetness scale, allulose is about 70% as sweet as sucrose, although it has a longer curve to peak sweetness than granulated sugar, but it's definitely not considered a high intensity sweetener. It is often blended with high intensity sweeteners though, especially stevia and monk fruit to achieve targeted sweetening objectives where allulose alone might not be able to meet that. Okay, so what kind of uh, sugar is it? I mean, exactly, what is it, how does it compare to other natural sugars? So allulose is considered a monosaccharide, which is a single sugar, and it's an epimer of another monosaccharide, fructose. It's a six carbon monosaccharide, like other sugar, and is able to replace erythritol in a lot of applications. It has a similar 0.2 to 0.4 calorie per gram guidance. And erythritol is very popular as a bulking agent. So we're seeing allulose kind of edge into that market to some extent at this point. Allulose is typically considered um, preferable over erythritol though in many products for reformulation or for new formulation where the cooling effect of erythritol might be noticeable and potentially objectionable to consumers. And so allulose doesn't have that that kind of minty cooling effect that erythritol and other polyols have? Correct. Ah. Correct. Now, I, I've also heard that allulose is popular among the carb conscious consumers who, you know, are studying labels, focusing on the amount of sugar and added sugars in their diet. Am I right about that? That's right. So allulose is considered non-glycemic, so it has no effect on blood sugar levels, making it suitable for individuals with diabetes or just the general carb conscious crowd that's looking to avoid sugar spikes with their food and beverage choices. It does not affect blood sugar levels and is non-caryogenic, meaning it doesn't promote cavities as well. Oh, that's a, that's a definite plus. Um, what um... Uh, uh, foods and beverages are currently using allulose out there today, and are there any kind of restrictions to how it can be used? So actually right now, allulose is approved for fairly widespread use in a number of different food and beverage categories, including juices and soft drinks, even under high heat processing conditions. Uh, because it depresses freezing point like sugar, it's um, becoming popular for use in dairy and non-dairy frozen confections like gelatos, mm. ice creams, etc. And um, that application as well as uh, use in beverages is 
restricted by some guidance as far as how much allulose can be used. So we don't know whether there might be some potential gastrointestinal side effects at very high levels. So right now the FDA has set some limitations on how much allulose can be used, which is why we don't see it used as a 100% replacement in um, soft drinks, carbonated soft drinks, sugary drinks, where um, we might otherwise think that it might be a great replacement opportunity for nutritive sugar. Hmm. It also acts as a reducing sugar. So um, it contributes to Maillard browning and to caramelization like natural sugars do for bakery applications. Oh, okay. And uh, well, are there any drawbacks for manufacturers who want to use allulose for a new product or, you know, reformulation or uh, that kind of food or beverage? Yeah, right now, probably the biggest opportunity is just the commercialization of allulose and making uh, supplies meet demand out there as more companies are experimenting with it. Probably another uh, drawback to it is just consumer familiarity. So consumers want to trust the labels on the food products more and more. So whatever their definition is of clean or natural um, is guiding that purchase decision. And an International Food Information Council or IFIC study conducted in 2021 found that only about 15% of consumers actually recognize the term allulose on food labels. So that presents a tremendous opportunity from an educational standpoint for manufacturers, because the more you can draw the consumer to trial, the more they're likely going to really like uh, the opportunities that allulose present in um, their products of choice. It's specifically the fact that, again, allulose is labeled with no contribution to total sugars or added sugars in labeling. Yeah, but it is a natural sugar. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I find that, you know, since it's so new to the market, um, I, I, I do know that it was only a, a few years ago that the price point dropped uh, to add or below erythritol, which made it a lot more attractive to formulators. So if 15% of consumers out there have heard of it, um, I think it's a, a, a positive step. Um, now you were talking about FDA limits. Um, I know that there's a self-affirmed grass of uh, 30 grams uh, per day. So I know that would restrict it from say uh, a, a carbonated soft drink where you'll find more than 30 grams of sugar in a 12 ounce serving. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, you know, I, I can see where that's a limit. Um, any thoughts uh, to that 30 gram limit being uh, done away with since it's proven to be completely safe? I keep looking for those updates, but in the meantime, what we do see is allulose being synergistically formulated with other high intensity sweeteners, again, particularly stevia, which has a very high consumer appeal, as well as monk fruit. Um, and those two being considered natural opportunities for high intensity sweetening of blending um, are kind of directionally where many manufacturers are headed, at least for now. Uh, I, I have talked to um, some research chefs who are using allulose in formulation development. And they have found it to be a great one-to-one -one replacer to sucrose in baked goods. And uh, they've also mentioned that it being so close to fructose, almost a chemical clone of fructose, it elevates the flavors of fruit, chocolate, vanilla. Um, do you think we're going to be seeing more allulose in baked uh, and uh, confectionery products? I think it has tremendous application in confectionery. I think it blends extremely well with chocolate. So um, as it relates to uh, candy baked goods that, um, again, where that bulk um, may not be as much as a, of a factor, certain cookies, brownies, um, dense cake uh, formulations, I think it's got tremendous potential. Oh, good. Many, many thanks, Alexa, for that 
wonderful in-depth look at allulose sugar and we're going to be calling on you to keep us informed as the news advances so thank you for joining us today you're welcome thank you and uh, I want to thank the viewers for joining us. You can find a number of Alexa's articles on preparedfoods.com and be sure to catch her podcast on sugar reduction next month. And then for more on-trend topics of interest for food and beverage formulators, just check out our growing coverage at preparedfoods.com under the media menu. Uh, thanks again. This is David signing off.